All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started here with this webinar. Uh, again, this is Scott Carlberg, I'm Product Marketing Manager um, for Motion Products for Yaskawa. And along with me here, uh, we have Jackie Wong, who's also one of, uh, one of our Product Marketing Managers. And uh, we're just going to go through uh, a few new products that we're launching today. These are the products that we're going to talk about today. Um, and as you guys are all aware, uh, we did a pretty major product launch um, in, in early last year in 2016, where we launched all of the, the Sigma 7, um, the main products, the, the amplifiers and the rotary motors up through 15 kilowatts. Um, and so now we're, we're starting to launch um, some supplemental products to that, to that main Sigma 7 launch. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we launched the uh, Sigma 7 SIEC and um, a couple other products that, so there's a, there's a recorded webinar um, online that you can go uh, take a look at if you haven't, if you, if you weren't able to attend that, that webinar a couple weeks ago. Um, but so this is, this webinar is an extension. So we're, we're launching a few more products now. So we're going to talk about the Sigma, Sigma, Sigma Logic 7 Compact, <clears throat> uh, gear motors for Sigma 7, a new line of direct drive servo motors, and um, some, some special firmware on the amplifiers that we're going to go through here. Um, and I'll explain all that to you. So first, uh, first subject is the Sigma Logic 7 Compact. And I, I'm going to let uh, Jackie Wong take over here to, to talk about this product. Hey everyone, uh, this is Jackie. Again, thanks for joining us. Uh, so the first product that I'm going to talk about is the uh, Sigma Logic 7 Compact. Uh, Functionality-wise, this is almost exactly the same as the original Sigma Logic. So in, in case uh, someone who uh, is not familiar with the original Sigma Logic, it is basically a servo pack that can be controlled by a Rockwell PLC. So what Yaskawa has done is we have we have written embedded code in, in uh, MotionWorks IC. We've also written uh, uh, add-on instructions in the RX Logix uh, environment so that this this uh, amplifier can be controlled by a Rockwell PLC. So uh, the the Sigma Logic Seven Compact is is exactly uh, same same uh, with with that functionality. But the key difference is. Uh, there, unlike the original Sigma Logic, there's no option card. Uh, everything is uh, run internally. So, so all, overall, it's, it's a much smaller package. Uh, one other key difference is uh, looking at the uh, uh, Ethernet ports. Uh, those two ports uh, have an internal switch and, and actually shares the, uh, the exact same uh, uh, IP address. This means that this uh, uh, Sigma Logic uh, 7 Compact can be daisy chained, uh, unlike, unlike uh, the previous Sigma Logic. Another key difference is that this product now, now supports uh, linear motors. Uh, because there is no uh, 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 option card, uh, there's no external encoder. Um, and uh, also, uh, again, because of, of no uh, option card, the, the only I.O. Uh, available for this product are the onboard I.O. on the Sigma 7 itself. Uh, this means there's uh, seven digital input and three digital output. And uh, just like the previous Sigma Logic, uh, this product will be configured through uh, the software Logic Works, and we will have a, a, a version two of, of the Logic, Work, uh, Logic Works software. Uh, Nomenclature-wise, it's uh, very similar to all the uh, Sigma 7 <coughs> product. Uh, the key difference is uh, for for the uh, near the end, you'll see Q0 for, as a product code for the Sigma Logic 7 Compact, and uh, the the uh, material number will end in F51. Uh, this information will be online and will be on the literature. Um, and uh, this this product uh, pricing uh, list price will be exactly same as the uh, original Sigma Logic product. And uh, that's pretty much it. Um, the uh, website uh, uh, should be available right now. And uh, uh, ordering will begin uh, at the end of the week. week and, and shipping uh, of the product will start uh, at the end of the month. And that's, that's all the information I have for the Sigma Logic 7 Compact. And I'm going to pass the floor back to Scott for the other products. Sounds good. Uh, thanks, Jackie. <clears throat> So just moving on, um, talk about uh, Sigma 7 gear motors. We've finished all of our um, internal testing with regard to these gear motors. 
and we've got um, <clears throat> the manufacturing or the assembly line is pretty much ready to go to start shipping these. Um, so what we have here is we, we've basically extended the rotary motor product line to, inclear, to include um, planetary a gearhead option that you can add to any of the four um, rotary motor types, which you can see here in the part number breakdown, that the SGM7A, the 7J, the 7G, and the 7P motors. And then um, we have a 200 volt and a 400 volt offering. Right now the 400 volt offering um, is only up to one kilowatt, which is what we have released on the rotary motors right now. <clears throat> you can get these with or without a break. The, there's five um, ratios that we've set up initially, uh, which you can see here. These are the kind of the most popular ratios that we see. Um, and then there are uh, seven different uh, frame sizes of the gearheads that may along with, with the different motor sizes. Um, these gearheads are um, standard five arc minute backlash um, gearheads, so high performance uh, planetary servo grade gearheads that we're, that we're pairing with the, with the motors. So these are <clears throat> factory tested, so the, the performance data that we have uh, listed in the catalog uh, which, which I'll show you here in the upcoming uh, slides. Those are all factory tested and guaranteed. Um, you know, the, the warranty of these packages is the standard Yaskawa warranty. So uh, part of the value here is, you know, we're taking uh, responsibility for the whole gear motor assembly. <clears throat> we take responsibility for the, the combination um, performance uh, um, data. Uh, and we, sum, we assemble them here at the factory and ship them as an assembled unit. <clears throat> as far as the gearing technology goes, um, a lot of advantages that, that we're able to uh, promote. Um, the the pre precision helical gearing just allows for uh, a quieter, um, an audibly quieter and smoother motion uh, coming out of the, the actuator. And because they're, uh, you're able to, with, with the, uh, the way the gearing's arranged, you're able to have more contact than, than a lot of other standard gearhead types. Um, a lot of more contact between the teeth, which allows you to have um, um, more accuracy, more capacity. Um, another unique advantage of these gearheads is they have a, a bearing structure where there's, they're supported on both sides of the, uh, um, of the, the pinion gear, which just um, reduces the amount of deflection that you can see in the gears. Again, um, giving you more, um, more force out of, the, out of the gear head and also extending the life of, of the, the gear head or of the gearing. Um, so these gear heads have been um, optimized around the Escawa servo motors from the standpoint of the coupling that is um, internally uh, attached to the uh, motor shaft and also the mounting flange. So a lot of, uh, you know, when you're just mixing and matching servo motors and gearheads, uh, you know, a lot of gearhead vendors will um, kind of try and hit a very wide range of motors that they're able to service with a given frame size. So a lot of times the coupling will be larger and the, the, the mounting flange will be larger to, to accommodate a, a wide range of motors. These have been um, pretty much optimized for our uh, servo motor sizes. So the, the effective um, um, inertia uh, that you're dealing with uh, on the motor attached to the, to the gear head is gonna be less. Um, so you're going to be able to have a more dynamic system because of that reduced inertia. And also it's physically, the gear motor is going to be physically smaller um, because of the reduction in size of the, of the mounting flange. <clears throat> uh, these gear heads are uh, grease filled as opposed to oil filled. So there's no, um, there are no restrictions in which direction you mount these. You don't have to worry about, um, you know, if you're mounted in the, in the wrong direction that, you know, the, the oil kind of settles and you get more wear in a, in a certain party, in a certain part of the mechanics in the gear head. Um, these are maintenance free. The, the grease doesn't have to be changed throughout the life of the gear head. <clears throat> um, so both nice, nice options. And then overall quality and performance, uh, as I mentioned, these are uh, five arc minutes or less backlash 
and these gear motors are 100% factory tested. Um, so when we when we get an order for a gear motor, you know we're gonna assemble the the gearhead to the uh, to the motor, and we're gonna do a few different tests um, on the assembly line before we pack it up and ship it out to uh, to our customers. So we're just adding a little bit of value here. Um, we've we've heard from a lot of customers that um, that you know, they really like this value that we're providing by, you know, the assembly and the testing and, you know, you're reducing, um, <clears throat> we're reducing vendors for some of our customers to a single point of contact, which is also a, a nice selling point. The next product I want to talk about is our new series of direct drive motors. And these are uh, called the SGM7F series. Um, so the iron, they, they have an iron core design, which allows us to make to physically make these motors a lot smaller um, than what you're familiar with with our with our previous generation product, the SGM CS, and a lot smaller than most everything else that you'll see out in the industry. A lot more compact design. So you can see over here on the right, um, one of the one of the popular direct drive motors in the market is the DDR from Cole Morgan, and these are exact same output um, output torque and speed and you can see the kind of the difference in size so it's pretty pretty dramatic difference and actually it's even more dramatic if you see these sitting side by side in person or, or if you see the difference on a machine um, uh, so very attractive um, for, for customers that are using this type of technology the motors have a built-in 24-bit absolute serial, serial encoder the same encoder type that's used on the, the uh, standard rotary motors. <clears throat> um, you can get the, uh, you know, as far as the, the uh, connectors or the cable exit, you can have uh, connectors on the rear side of the motor or you can have uh, cables exiting on the side, side mount or the, the side of the motor. And these are the same options that, are, um, that were available on the, on the previous generation product. We're going to stock um, both of those types uh, both of those option types uh, on the previous generation product only the the rear mount connectors were were the standard stock item uh, the other nice thing that we're doing with this product is we're actually uh, assembling these in our buffalo grove uh, manufacturing facility in illinois so um, we're going to be assembling all four frame sizes the the a frame which is the smallest the 100 millimeter isn't quite ready to go um, it's probably still a few months off. We're still kind of working through um, working through that design to, to finalize it. Uh, but the other three um, frame sizes are ready to go, and, and we're building those in Buffalo Grove right now. And you can uh, you can look through the the catalog data, which I'll show you at the end of the webinar here. But um, basically, these are these are the three the three frame sizes, and then the different um, continuous torque. Um, uh, limits re related to each of these. So the inherent advantages of direct drive motors, I, I'm sure a lot of a lot of you are already familiar with. But the idea is that you know you're eliminating mechanical compliance in your system, which um, in turn, so if you're eliminating gear heads, you're eliminating you know ball screws, belt drives, any kind of mechanical transmission that causes um, mechanical mechanical compliance and limits you know how responsive you can be with your servo. We're, we're, we're coupling these motors directly to the load. So as a result, you can crank up your, your uh, gains in your servo and you can get a lot more responsive system and uh, a lot of times uh, a lot more accurate system. Um, you're operating at a, at a slower um, speed overall. Usually these motors are in the range of, you know, 300 to 600 RPM at the output of the direct drive motor. but you know, you're eliminating all of the, the gearing um, and, and, the, and the mechanics in your system. Um, so that, that's where your advantage comes in. Um, these are, because there's very little compliance, you're able to handle a lot larger um, load inertias. So we, we've actually tested these, you know, above 100 to 1 type uh, uh, load mismatches. And, you know, depending on, you know, what you're doing with the load, um, you know, you can you can you can handle really large large inertia loads, um, but it just gives you some more flexibility in uh, with this different product type in, in a lot of different applications. <clears throat> uh, and again, so 
reducing the amount of uh, mechanical complexity in your machine um, is is most of the time going to reduce the overall cost of your machine. Definitely going to re uh, reduce the overall cost of maintaining your machine as mechanical parts wear, um, reduce the amount of failure points. Uh, you know, as an OEM, it it uh, it just reduces the amount of support that that OEM is going to have to uh, to spend on you know different failures in the machine uh, moving forward. So it's a really cool design. If you've never sold uh, a direct drive motor or kind of specified it into an application, I'd I'd recommend that you really look into this product. Um, <clears throat> we have a couple of application notes and. Um, I believe we have a product video as well that's up on our website. There, I I linked to a to a, an article here here that we recently posted in the last year or so that talks about you know one application that where we we uh, design these in. So you can when I'll send out this uh, <clears throat> I'll make this um, presentation available after the webinar and you guys can click on to that and take a look at that um, and and you can take a look at some of our other application notes on a direct drive technology. So um, some other options that we're going to have on the amplifier, um, I'm going to go through. We have some uh, special versions of the firmware that give you some additional functionality. One of them is this, this first one I'm going to talk about is the built-in indexer. So um, if you've been uh, with Yaskawa for a long time, you probably recognize um, the uh, the option card that we've had on both the Sigma 2 products and the Sigma 5 products, it, which is the indexer card. And what that allows you to do is um, to, based on um, IO, you know, you can toggle through different uh, index moves and dwell times. You can basically put together a simple indexing package for an application and initiate, you know, the indexes through inputs um, or through uh, serial signals. Um, so what this product is, is we've, we've put all of that functionality into the base amplifier without the use of having to have, or without having to have an extra option card. So um, you're able to set up the index table just like you were on the, the previous product. So you take the, uh, the, just the standard inputs and outputs on the drive and you can accomplish all these things. The index table, the zone output table, uh, or the jog speed table. So this is a nice product uh, if you just need something that's really simple, uh, just a simple indexing, like I need to move something you know, out and in, and you, just, you don't really wanna program this on a full-blown motion controller. Um, this, is, this is a nice product for that type of application. You configure everything through um, the, our standard configuration software, Sigma Win Plus. So you're gonna set up your uh, index table in Sigma Win Plus and initiate everything from there. This is available on our analog, uh, the Sigma 7 analog servo packs, and it's an option. Um, so you actually have to order, there's a uh, uh, F79 suffix at the end of the part number that you have to specify if you want this built-in indexer. And then th the main difference between this built-in indexer firmware as opposed to the, the option card version, which we also sell, is that the, the built-in indexer um, doesn't uh, allow you to communicate to it through uh, uh, serially. So if you want to um, dry, you know, if you want to send uh, new positions like from an HMI or from a PLC, if you want to constantly send new positions serially, you would have to uh, revert back to the option card version of this. Um, but other than that, uh, you know, the, this product is a uh, um, pretty nice package for um, just your typical simple indexing type application. The next option um, for the, that we have for built-in um, kind of firmware functionality adder is called the MaxTrack. And this is for applications, um, it was pretty much designed for kind of two-dimensional um, coordinated motion that you see in a typical shape cutting type application where you're cutting some type of uh, two-dimensional material. You know, for instance, a plasma cutting, uh, water jet cutting, laser cutting, those types of applications where you're trying to coordinate two axes. And what you're trying to do is stay as tight to the command signal um, as possible, um, or basically the positioning between those two axes as possible. And this, um, this 
function allows for a lot tighter position control than you, you see in the standard Sigma 7 drive, which is already very high. But for really, for really aggressively um, high performance applications, this firmware can really help help you come out with a better cut, a, a better finish quality, that type of thing. Again, this all the parameters for this specific firmware are configured with Sigma 1 Plus. These are available um, right now on uh, analog uh, servo pack amplifiers, uh, soon to be released on um, um, Mechatronic. Uh, but right now available on analog. And again, at the end of the amplifier part number, you'll have a F19 at the end of the part number um, to designate this, this special functionality. And the third version of uh, uh, special firmware amplifier uh, supports a gear motor actuator that um, has been developed and uh, uh, sold, uh, sold by Harmonic Drive. Um, they make uh, um, high precision um, harmonic gearing and so what they've done they've actually taken uh, this motor actuator motor gearhead actuator and they have implemented um, the Escawa encoder protocol into their feedback device and so um, what this custom firmware allows you to do is just plug right into this into this uh, motor gearhead actuator and the amplifier automatically recognizes this product um, just like it was a Yaskawa servo motor. Uh, so Yaskawa is not going to be reselling this gear, gear motor product, um, but we are able to interface with it through this, this special firmware. Uh, nice advantage of these harmonic drive packages are the, the compactness of the design. Um, so very small and compact, much like our direct drive motors, but um, because of the gear ratios that, that they're able to hit uh, with these really compact gear heads, you're able to um, get a lot higher torque uh, output than you would from a traditional direct drive motor. So they can be a good fit in, uh, in certain applications. Um, so if you do have a customer that's using um, you know, a, a through shaft gear motor like this, uh, or if they're using this specific, this specific uh, uh, product from Harmonic Drives, that would be someone you might want to contact um, um, and, and you know, talk about driving that axis as well as all the all these auxiliary axis that they're using on, on that machine. Um, so again, there's a $200 list price adder for amplifiers with that, with that uh, functionality. And these are available on the EtherCAT um, servo packs right now. Again, that support on Mechatrolink is coming in the, in the very near future. So just briefly talk about a few of the sales tools that we've updated uh, for all these products. So if you go on our website right now, um, which let me just I'll click over to the website, you'll see um, you'll see all these products are now on the in the in our on our website. So if you come over here to the motion products, <clears throat> um, the uh, let's see here, gear motors uh, right up here on the top menu. So you can click in here and you can see all the all the details um, for the individual gear motor product lines. You'll see a link to the uh, uh, an updated uh, motion control brochure, and also uh, a link to our, our technical supplement, which now has um, all of the gear motor data in in them. You also you're also going to see all of the 3D drawings associated with these products are up on the website. So everything you need from a pre-sale standpoint um, is is at your disposal. Um, and see some of the other products. So the direct drive motors are also up here. Um, if we come in here to the direct drive section, anyway, SGM7F, that's the new series. So you can get to, again, all, all of the information you're going to need to go out and start selling these are, are up on the website. <clears throat> um, the technical supplement has been updated. So if you go to the, if you download the new version of the technical supplement off of our website, you're gonna see, if you go into the individual motor sections, <clears throat> you've got information here on, on the gear motors with the part number breakdown, and you've got, if we go a little bit further, got everything in here from, uh, 
from the, the specs and, and also the dimensions later on. So all this is up and, and ready for you guys to start looking at so you can go out and sell this product. So I think that's uh, I think that's about everything I wanted to talk about. It looks like we have a whole bunch of questions. All right, hey, uh, this is Jackie. So the first two questions are related to the uh, Sigma Logic 7 Compact. Uh, the first question is, hey, uh, no external encoder, what if I need it? Uh, if you need an external encoder, uh, what I suggest is to go with the original Sigma Logic, which is the Sigma 5 version of the Sigma Logic product. Uh, and the second question was, uh, it was not clear, can you uh, daisy chain the, the product or not? Uh, the answer is yes. For the uh, Sigma Logic 7 Compact, you, you can daisy chain the product. Yeah, with the, uh, with the direct drive motors, the SGM7F, um, if, you're, if you're replacing uh, an older SGM-CS type motor, um, you definitely will want to take a look at, there, there is, on some of the motors, there is a little bit of an inertia, uh, rotor inertia difference. So make sure you keep that in mind when you're looking to size these. Um, that's a good point by, by one of our listeners here. A couple questions on the harmonic drive actuators. Oh, well, there's one specific question about whether or not that's available in a washdown version. Um, I'm not completely familiar with all the details on that product, but if you actually go to the harmonic drive website, um, you can kind of see all the different options on that. I don't believe there's a washdown version of it. Um, but you can kind of look at all the different options for that SHA actuator on the Harmonic Drive, uh, the website there. So this question about uh, some of the special firmware that I talked about. Um, so what we do is, uh, you know, logistically, we take a standard servo pack from stock, um, and when, when someone wants one of those additional functionality versions, we just flash the firmware at our Buffalo Grove facility and relabel it and, and ship it out as that new product. Um, so there, there, are, there are not long lead times associated with those. Um, we're just, the lead time will be based off of our standard stock of amplifiers here uh, in the US, which is a good thing. <clears throat> uh, there's a question about the gear motors, if we can uh, provide those in, in different ratios than what I outlined here. So, um, I would definitely welcome any opportunities for uh, both, you know, special ratios or different gearhead technologies like, you know, right angle or uh, ones with a flange mount. There, there are a few different um, options that we can that we could play with with uh, with regard to doing special gear motor assemblies. The gearhead vendor that we've chosen to work with is a, a company called Shimpo. They own most of the market share in Japan for, you know high-grade servo-rated uh, planetary gearheads. You, there won't be any reference to Shimpo on, on our product, but just to let you guys know, that that is where the, the gearheads are coming from um, when, when we sell a gear motor solution. Um, there's a question about, can an amplifier be sent back to the factory to be upgraded um, to one of the, the specialty firmware versions that I talked about? Uh, that's theoretically possible. Obviously, we haven't done any of that since we're just releasing the product right now. So I would say, uh, if you have a situation like that, talk to your field sales uh, person, and we can take a look at that. I think that's about all I wanted to talk about today. Um, so again, I appreciate everybody's time. Uh, you know, listening to this webinar. Take a look at our website. Take a look at the new product literature. And if you have questions, you can contact me, or you can contact your your regional sales person to kind of go over any questions that you have. But again, thank you, and that's it for today. Thanks, everyone.